Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. Today has very little to do with concrete. It's an entire ground mount solar system build. And what we're going to be showing in this, we're doing a two-part series here. And this is part one, and this is the build of the ground rack, the mounting rack. And the type of rack we're using is called Snap and Rack Series 200. And I'm going to show you how to build your own solar mount basically i got a diy kit delivered to me um, and now we're gonna put it in and build it there is a little concrete in here actually because the footings go six feet deep on these they're only 12 inch diameter here's the squaring technique that i'm using Actually, the way I'm laying this out, because we want our panels, we're in the wet western hemisphere, so we got to be facing south with our panels. And what I did was I kind of put a string line up, and I downloaded an app, um, for a compass, basically, on my phone. And I held my phone down on my string line to get a true um, east-west-south orientation for this entire design. Rather than getting an auger and drilling, because I'm really sandy soil here, probably would have caved in on me by the time I ended up getting concrete in it. So we overdug with a backhoe, um, held the sauna tubes in place and pushed dirt around them. That string line represents the center line of the two inch pipes that are gonna be coming out of those holding the entire um, ground rack up in the air. I've got a few different brands of sauna tubes here, 12 inch diameter. And the way sauna tubes work is this is what I found out. Now you can get full lengths that would go the full six feet deep. But the problem with that is you're going to pay a lot more per lineal foot for your sauna tube. So if you get the four foot sections at Lowe's or Home Depot, you're going to pay about half price. And the way they ship them to Home Depot is even though they say a 12 inch diameter, they actually fit in one another. So you get... So you can stack them, in other words. You can go higher than four feet because they fit inside each other and you just run a few screws through them. And that's what I did here to get my full height at the least expensive sauna tubes I can get. So the back of the solar ground mount, it actually was uh, six feet deep. The high end of the, because they're at a 30 degree angle. So that's the deep end. Now the short end was only uh, four feet deep on those uh, posts. Now we're going back quite a ways from the ground mount location to the power pole, to the main panel. It's about 80 feet. Well, it's actually a little bit more than that. It's more like 100 feet. So we've got three posts, front, three in the rear, six total. The, in, the kit that came with this with the panels, the invert micro inverters, all the hardware, um, the wiring inside the boxes. The only thing you have to buy for the, in this kit that's not included is the pipe that you see here that I'm using. This is a galvanized inch and a half schedule 40. So these are these pipes are threaded on on each end. They're 21 foot lengths. And it's 23 foot long, so you do need threads for two horizontal bars, which you'll see here. You got your top horizontal, your lower horizontal that connect your three uprights. So 23 feet, yeah, you need the threads on a coupling because you need, because uh, these pipes come in 21 foot length. So that's why you need threaded. And um, another nice thing about what I did is I left threads on the ends in case I want to continue out. I can just thread in another pipe and then pop more panels on. You'll see that as we get through this, what I kind of did in order to make this system bigger if I wanted to. You notice the tape I'm putting on that string line? That is one edge of that pipe. Because as I pour the concrete in here, I want to be able to see 
where I have to drop these pipes in much easier than uh, I was using a permanent pen marker on the string line and I found that was hard to see especially when you're dumping concrete on it kept getting covered so I put a piece of tape and it was very visible that way and here's Eric the chef he's got his uniform on he's mixing this concrete up nice and juicy so it falls all the way to the bottom I do have a vibrator on hand to really work it in and it's very difficult to dump a wheelbarrow into a 12 inch diameter a lot of a lot of it spills on the sides so you um, I'm gonna shovel it in as much as possible there's my DeWalt cordless vibrator now this is the back side of the panel and it goes about six feet deep um, luckily, I've got a magnetic level here, so it just sticks to the pole, and I can plumb it real easy. And if you look closely in the background, you'll see the Milwaukee cordless generator, or it's a battery-operated oper generator, and that's actually running my concrete mixer. I did two yards with that Milwaukee generator without having to charge the batteries. Really nice. No fuel to worry about, it always runs. So as I set these, I'm, I'm kind of building up the concrete to the post so the water drains away. But here's an idea of what it's going to look like, inevitably. This particular kit comes with all the drawings. Um, they're fairly easy to read. So that's what we followed on this entire build, and we are getting inspections. We had one inspection already before we put the concrete in the hole. That's the structural aspect of the um, project here is a ground rack. So they have to inspect the depth of these holes before we place concrete. The entire drawings that come with this kit is all in pre-engineered. So you just take it down to the city, they look at it and then uh, approve it. And then you start building. I've got the Milwaukee smart level there. What I'm doing with that smart level is I'm getting my 30 degree angle. because so I'm gonna put these at exactly 30 degrees. And uh, I've, got the, I've got the DeWalt laser level there and I marked all my pipes level and now I'm measuring up from those to get my 30 degrees. I actually used just a, a aluminum screed with the smart level, 30 degrees on one of them. And then I just had to measure up from all my level marks to establish all the other pipe elevations. Really quick and simple. Because I ran the pipes a little long. That's why we had to do it that way. It was much easier than trying to set elevation and plumb and in line all simultaneously. Very difficult. This way I didn't worry about the height when I was setting these posts, I just had to worry about um, whether they're in the right place and straight. Here's one of the top rails that are going on. You notice we got those slip couplings. They all have set screws on them. This system's really forgiving. I mean, if I was off on any one of these components by an inch to two inches, it would still work. It would still go together. There's a lot of play in this stuff. So we slide the top rail in first with all of our um, couplings already slid on because we got those angle pipes. It's bracing basically off of your off your vertical pipe to your horizontal. I'm using DeWalt cordless cutoff saw. Works beautiful for this. On each, uh, the vertical overhang is 32 inch maximum according to this particular engineer drawing. We can go 32 inch overhang off the verts. And the panels themselves, uh, let's see, they, they're gonna hang on. They set about 17 inches off of the rails that you're gonna see us putting up here pretty soon.
Now we're going to put another brace that joins the rear, rear set of verticals to the front vertical set. You can see it there. It's just a slight angle. And when I screw all these set screws in, we're a little bit off the bottom, a little bit off the um, concrete, a couple inches, just so water doesn't accumulate around these uh, brackets. Uh, and I mean, I don't think it ever will, not in this area, but if you're in a wet climate, yeah, you're gonna wanna do, think of all those things. Now this is uh, your rails that fasten to the panels. Both sides are identical for easy um, attachment of different accessories. And you'll see why that comes in handy later here. Each one of these rails are spaced approximately, I think it was three feet apart to accommodate um, landscape style setting on the panels. There's all your rails. There's your whole ground mount right there. That's pretty much complete. Now it's just a matter of attaching your panels we're going to show in part two the panels going on, all the inverters, and plugging them together and running your wire back to panel step by step. You know, and I looked at a lot of different videos of solar installation because personally this is the first time I ever did it. And I have never, I didn't find one that was as complete as this one's going to be. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a good one.